You see, 1979, we had an opening in Ghana. Actually, from 1978. But 1979, we really started going to Ghana. And I will go at the weekend. I will go by road. And it was quite hard. Quite hard. Sometimes at the borders uh, from Togo to Ghana, they will stop us. And they had no place to put us. We'll just stay in the sun there. And when you are hungry, all that you could eat will be that you will have some, you know, bread or whatever, milk. But those things, sometimes they are so hot that you really don't enjoy them. And eventually we get to Ghana. And the place will get accommodation. The beds will be full of these, uh, you know, bed birds, insects. That when you wake up in the morning, you will see that the whole bed had been stained by your blood. And yet... We needed to do some work there, real foundational work. And you know, sometimes I was there. That time I was a lecturer at the University of Lagos. And when you think about it as a lecturer, I exposed myself to all that type of danger and, you know, bad, bad condition there. And uh, we were there in Ghana, and they closed their borders because they wanted to change their money because uh, of the black market. And when they closed their borders, and I didn't even take permission from the University of Lagos because I, was, I just went on a Friday so as to do something there and come back Sunday night. That Friday, they made the announcement over the radio all over Ghana that they were closing the borders. And uh, some of us went to Accra and we pleaded with the officials that, uh, well, we are not Ghanaians, we don't have your money. They said, we're well, sorry, if we open the uh, border for you. Some of the Ghanaians who are outside, they'll try to sneak in. And they wanted to do that thorough exchange of their cities. That's of their currency. So we were not allowed. And I was in there. No money. No food. No good accommodation. And the place we got, the place was so bad. Even in my early childhood days, when I was in primary school, I don't remember sleeping in conditions like that. And of course, when you're a university student, and those days, university was, you know, rated high in the, you know, early 60s. I went to university in 1964 at the University of Ibadan, you know, a very good, great university. And, uh, you know, to have been in such a place and be in that place in Ghana, it was hard. Very, very hard. No good food. And, you know, there was no tract for us to use because I didn't go with a lot of tracts. What am I to do now? You know, immediately, I sat down. And since I wrote the tracts in Nigeria here, I could sit down and write new tracts. And the people were lining up in Ghana, in all the banks, because they needed to exchange the old currency for the new currency. Immediately, I wrote tracts on salvation, on evangelism. And the following day, I took them to the press over there. I didn't have money. I said, take my word. I'll pay you later. There's no money now. You know the borders are closed. And they printed everything for me. And I got some people in Ghana. And I distributed them to all the banks where people were waiting. And I said, go and distribute there. When we did that in Kumasi, I sent people to all the towns in Ghana. And I said, this is how to do the work of God. Hard days, but fruitful days. But you know now, Ghana has established a deeper life. In Accra alone, our church is more than 2,000 in membership. In Kumasi, our church is more than 1,500. They had a retreat this year, April. You know how many people in the retreat? More than 17,000 at the retreat. But you see, you must be able to endure hardship. 